Come on, let's take your tongue, come on. I've had residents break down in tears, stroking the bearded dragon. It was really lovely to see. There were tears of joy. Oh dear. Six years ago, Chris Freeman started Tropical Discovery, a company that uses insects, reptiles and birds as therapy for the elderly. I started taking animals into care homes because activity coordinators do a brilliant job, they really do. But when a, a, a resident has got <laughs> maybe a couple of games a day and watching TV, I thought it must get quite boring for them to be either bed bound or chair bound or you know, just not have a great deal to do because of their age. What do you reckon? Gonna give it a go? I will. And I thought it'd be great to introduce them to some of these animals and see how they get on with them. Since starting his business, Chris has seen just how much of an impact these creepy crawlies can have on care home residents. The joy on their face of one learning about something they've never even seen before or heard of before, but actually getting to hold something in front of them, it, it, it just gave me more, more of a thrill than I think it gave them. So it was just a case of, right, I want to contact as many care homes as I can. I'd now do more care homes than I do at birthday parties or schools. It tends to be my, uh, my main role now and I love it. How many animals do I have at home? Crikey. Okay, so starting with bugs, I've got a couple of hundred stick insects of different species. So that's a jungle nymph. It's reportedly the second biggest insect in weight. We have a couple of hundred cockroaches of different species, Madagascan hissers and feeder cockroaches. Giant millipedes, giant snails, giant centipedes and scolopendras, arachnids, so I have tailless whip scorpions, a handful of those. Good girl. Must have around about 12 tarantulas. This is a Brazilian black. About 18 snakes at the moment. There you go, meat soul. <laughs> Burby python. Parrot, a couple of bearded dragons, a couple of crested geckos, a couple of leopard geckos. White tree frogs, I'm bound to have forgotten something. There must be about 400 animals in this house. It's a jumping spider, as you can see. <laughs> She's not gonna come out. What I'm gonna first get down is some small stick insects because some residents, they're, uh, they're a bit nervous of certain animals. So these are quite calm and quite easy to, uh, to handle. They just sit there dancing for you. We'll also go for my daughter's second tarantula. She's uh, a Chilean rose. She's good as gold. And this is one of the things that when residents get to hold one of these that you can see the, the smile on their own faces. I think what we'll take as well is Alan. So this is Alan, who's an albino corn snake. This one is so good natured. We'll also take the bearded dragon. I find these ones especially good for residents with mild dementia. I've had residents break down in tears, stroking the bearded dragon. It was really lovely to see, you know, there were, it, there were tears of joy. These are the Madagascan hissing cockroaches. So it's basically just hissing to say, don't eat me. But that's a male, they can get a little bit, a bit grumpy sometimes. People think they're vermin and then they're disease ridden. But these ones are actually really clean. There has been a suggestion that these actually clean themselves to get the smell of us off of them. Give it something to eat, there we go. Already, I'll get these down by the front door and then we'll head on down to the care home. Okay. When Chris comes in, he brings in a selection of exotic animals. It gives the residents a purpose. It gives them something to look forward to, something to enjoy. Living with a dementia can be difficult. Even if they don't remember that experience, they still have that feeling of enjoyment. They've actually done something with a purpose of today for their well-being. No, no. You held them all last time. You were brilliant. You did them all. With my version of stimulation therapy, it's a case of where residents, they can be sat there quite a lot of the day. But when it's actually having something walk across their hands. There we go. Hello. 
Especially if they're sight impaired. To have a giant millipede walk across their hand and fill hundreds of legs, or to have a snake in their hand and fill the, the way the snake feels and, and the scales and it moves through the hand or on the back of their neck. The way they explain that they've never felt anything like that before. You're okay around the shoulders? Oh yes. Excellent. I thought yeah. so. If they're happy and they're enjoying it, then that's therapy to me. We'll try and get the people who are scared of these sort of things out of that and bring more people into loving these sort of animals instead of trying to kill them or... I was going to give you a kiss on the cheek, look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I end up in a nursing home, that I'm hopefully going to have a room full of my animals as well and I'll, I'll still be doing this. As long as I can either educate people or give people enjoyment, then I'm going to keep going as long as I can. See you later, love, all right? And thank you so much. For no, my pleasure. It's been lovely.